From where you get to your medical education? My, my medical education was, first of all, I went to Cambridge University. I went there in 1968 and uh, then after three years at, at university in Cambridge, I did my clinical work in King's College Hospital London and um, then went to uh, work at King's in South London. Did you choose your uh, geology by your will or by chance? I think that it's by happy accident. I, my father was a cardiac surgeon and I was determined I was not going to do medicine. <laughs> but I fell in love with biology, so I continued doing biology. So what's left, you can be a teacher or you can go into medicine. So I sort of said, okay, but I won't do surgery. I'll be a psychiatrist. But then I realized that I really love doing things with my hands and um, creating things, working with things. Um, I had to do surgery, but at least I was not going to do cardiac surgery. So I went into urology. Urology went in, in the early 80s. This was the most massive sea change in urology because when I started, it was almost all with a, a scalpel. Um, open surgery w was the rule and only a small percentage of what we did was endoscopic. And within a few years, this completely changed. We, uh, we did almost everything endoscopically. How are you different PCNL and RIRS? As you can hear, I've got this huge interest in RIRS because I developed the laser. But I also have a huge love of percutaneous surgery. I worked with John Wickham, who was the pioneer of, of percutaneous surgery in, in the UK and indeed in Europe. And um, uh, working with him was always inspiration. I went through a period of thinking, you know, RIRS is going to replace PCNL, but that's a mistake because if you start doing stones that are too big, you can cause great suffering to your patient. With percutaneous surgery, you can clear the system, leave no drains, leave no stent, leave no nephrostomy tube. Um, if you just aim to get every last piece of stone out, then the patient does very well. RIRS, it's so difficult to get every last little piece out if the stone is big. How did you spend your spare time? Right, well, I have a family. Um, I like sport. Um, there's this terrible game called golf where you can waste your whole life trying to hit a ball with a, a club. Played squash a lot and um, I became a reasonable squash player and uh, did that until I was um, 60. Then I ran out of partners to play against. How much time spend you with your family? I, um, I, I find time with my family to be just the, the greatest. We really enjoy my family and now it's expanded to grandchildren. What a huge pleasure. So. Um, whenever I can, I spend time with them and uh, with my grandchildren, you know, this is the best times. So um, I make sure my weekends are completely free now. What about your practice? Well, until just last month, I was completely full time, working very hard. Now we have new consultants come in and my job is to train them up so they can replace me which is fine. I, I will stay until I feel that they're absolutely able to cope without me and then I will uh, find other things to do. Any message for young geologists? Well, I would say, I think that the important thing is to keep interested, keep developing and um, that uh, and keep your love for the, for the area alive. Forget the politics. It's the, the patients and seeing the patients get better which improves you. And um, teaching, you will never tire of teaching. So the, the two golden rules, I would say, are number one, patience, and number two, teaching. And that will sustain you throughout your existence. Any message for patients? Any message for the patients? Yes, 
stay fit, drink lots of water, um, and, uh, and choose your urologist wisely. Thank you very much. Sir. Thank you very much.